we've got an incredible inspirational story for you now. When our next guest was just 19 years old, he was involved in a horrific car accident which changed his life forever. Yeah, as a result of the accident, uh, Joe uh, DeMio suffered third-degree burns to 80% of his body, but thanks to pioneering transplant surgery, Joe is able to get his life back. Uh, Joe is the first person in the world to have received both a face transplant and a double hand transplant, which has restored his quality of life and also helped him find love. Yeah, he joins us now from New York to share his extraordinary story alongside his girlfriend, Jessica. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much. Good morning. <laughs> uh, good morning. Good morning. Joe, let's start with you and this, this story, which... which kind of changed your life in 2018 when you were just 19 years old. Tell us exactly what happened that day. Yeah, so I was just clocking into my normal night shift job and uh, when I was clocked out, just driving home from work and I fell asleep at the wheel. I veered off to the side of the road and hit a curve and my car hit a couple of times and it caught on fire and I woke up three and a half months later from a coma with uh, third degree burns all over my body. Wow. Absolutely unbelievable. So, Joe, then how many did you? Was your life then just surgery after surgery? How? What was the process after that? I well, in the coma they did like about like sixteen to seventeen skin grafts like all over my body, and then uh, when I woke up, it was just one more surgery they did on me. Uh, which I think it was my lips so I can eat more or eat better. And then just like just physical therapy after that. So it's constantly in therapy all the time. And then the doctors came with this idea that they could do a double hand transplant and a face transplant. Was that appealing to you at first or was you a little bit nervous about that? Uh, when, when the doctor first uh, said that to me, it was like a, it was a shock factor because I didn't know that was possible. The only time I heard of a face transplant was from a, a movie back in the 90s. And then so it was just like a, like a wow factor. But I, tr I trusted my doctor when I first met him. Uh, he was really like down to earth. It wasn't like your typical doctor. He was pretty up forward and uh, just had a lot of trust in him, which I liked. And Joe, do, what was your... What would your future have looked like had you not had the transplant? Like, what was your day-to-day -day life like? Uh, I was basically living on my parents' couch because uh, they had to amputate my fingers off and then just lay on the couch all day with my dog. And then that wasn't the life I wanted. And in the long run, I would have went blind because they had to suture my eyes somewhat. And then, because uh, I was really independent at two. Yeah. So it's just, that wasn't the life I wanted. And let's talk about the surgery, because the surgery actually took 24 hours to complete. Um, tell us a little bit about what exactly they did. Uh, so, yeah, they, they started it on my, my face first, and they did the right hand and left hand. And it was about, like, like, 80 nurses, 80 nurses and doctors in my surgical room at one, uh, like, in and out. And then they, uh, I woke up, I was just sedated for, like, two weeks, I think, so I wouldn't move and, like, damage the stitches or anything. Yeah, because it's unbelievable, because they actually had to amputate your hands in order to connect the new hands to you. It's unbelievable. So, when you woke up, um, how, how bad was it? How was you feeling? Uh, when I woke up, it was, like, instant, like, nerve pain, which, you know, it's not fun. It's, uh, the best way I describe it is, like, a cat clawing at my palms the whole time and... Oh my goodness. You know, the nurses did the best they could to you know, keep the pain down and, you know, they did a really good job and, you know, I liked them a lot. But it was mostly uh, like a lot of occupational therapy on my hands, like about like four to five hours a day. And I was like, uh, it was tiring, but I, I pushed through it. It's incredible. Uh, it is. Can you explain, Jess, you, am I right in thinking you're a nurse as well? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a nurse in uh, New York City right now. Great. Well, it's, it's, thanks for joining. Can you explain what the occupational therapy, ha how, how does that kind of manifest itself? Because that obviously seems a very important part of, uh, of Joe's story here and, and his rehabilitation. So what would that involve? Occup occupational therapy aims to get people back to uh, their normal life, wh whether it be cooking, cleaning. Uh, so for Joe, that meant 
working his hands, using the muscles, uh, fine motor skills, pulling up a zipper, picking up a penny, uh, using your debit card. That's all stuff that occupational therapy aims to improve in someone's life. And that was critical for Joe and, and still is. <laughs> so he still participates in occupational therapy. And as a nurse, you, are you noticing that dexterity, uh, you know, and, and, and like an improvement as you, you know, obviously, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend, so you, you, you know, you, you love him dearly, but are you sort of objectively, are you noticing it as well from a professional point of view that his, the dexterity is getting better and you're seeing progress? Yeah, of course. I see progress in Joe every day. I think when I see it the most is when he cooks in the kitchen. Sometimes I'll come home from work and he'll have all the vegetables cut up and that's when I know he's really improving. It's little things like that where a bell pepper could be very hard for him to cut. Um, it could take Joe 30 minutes where it takes, you know, someone with normal hands five minutes. So I see that improvement almost every day with things that he is able to do around the house. And that that's pretty cool yeah. <laughs> to see that. It's unbelievable. I want to know about the love story. How did it all happen? And when did you, how did you connect? And when did you fall in love? Uh, so she, she uh, followed her Instagram and I, I DM'd her about her dog. We had the same breed, Boston Terriers. And so I just DM'd her about her dog. And like two weeks later, uh, she came to visit. So you yeah, slid so into Jessica's DMs. <laughs> you slid into Jessica's DMs and you got her that way. The old Boston Terrier move. I like your style. Yeah. And Jessica, how, yeah. how, how is everything going? Oh, everything's going really well. Joe and I make the best team. Uh, we're on the same page in regards to what we want for our future. Uh, and, you know, right now what we're doing and putting our story out there, putting his story out there, we're on the same page with that. So we're, we're just really a great team. Uh, we work well together and we are, we're planning for a future. So it's pretty exciting. That's great stuff, guys. So, <laughs> so how would you like to motivate other people who have been through uh, you know, similar ordeal to yourself? Uh, the best way I, I like tell people online is just like stay in your own lane and just worry about yourself. Because when you only, when you only worry about yourself, you just uh, like you pick yourself up better like that instead of worrying all about other people and how they act and all stuff like that. That's how that's what I do for me. What's incredible is you have motivated, and inspired so many people. There was even a gentleman who actually was going to take his own life. And he, when he saw your story and heard about your story, he decided not to take his life. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Uh, they they DM'd me telling me about how they wanted to commit suicide, and you know, they my story helped them not. And that's when I really wanted to push my story out more. Because at first it was just like just for an inspiration on like, you know, if you don't like feel right about yourself or you just like down the dumps, and you know, just there to help you get out of the dumps. But then. When they reached out, I was like, okay, I have something to, to really push out there. Yeah, it's such an inspiring story, yeah. isn't it? It's Thanks absolutely for joining incredible. us, both of you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, Keep loving you. each thank other. And care. if there is going to be a wedding, could you invite me, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah thank definitely. you so much. Bye.